In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the Father of mercies, the God of all consolation, be with you all. In baptism, William received the sign of the cross. May he now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. In life, William cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my Father. My brothers and sisters, we believe that all the ties of friendship and affection which knit us as one throughout our lives do not unravel with death. Confident that God always remembers the good we have done and forgives our sins, let us pray, asking God to gather our brother William to himself. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort your servants in their grief and to receive William into the arms of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlocked the gates of life for those who believe in you. Forgive William his sins and grant him a place of happiness, light, and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God, to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Now that very day, the first day of the week, two of the disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther, but they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to one another, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way? and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem where they found gathered together the 11 and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Archbishop Lori. Bishop Jugas, Abbot Placid, my brother priests, and deacons, seminarians, friends of Bishop Bill, one and all. We come here on this feast day of Mary, the mother of God. It seems so apropos for this good man. For it was in a parish by that very name that 
Our dear Bishop Curlin spent 13 years of his ministry working among the poor. Some 36 years ago, when I was a new seminarian, on a cold winter night, much like tonight, we were coming back from a sick call at Georgetown University Hospital, and he said, let's go down and take a look at the uh, pageant of peace on the mall. So we came down Pennsylvania Avenue, and we stopped there, and we looked at the tree and walked about. And then he said, I understand that that new Vietnam Veterans Memorial is going on down, just down the street. It's being built. Why don't we go visit? And the sun was lowering down below the horizon. It was starting to get dark. We pulled up. In those days, you could park anywhere you wanted on the mall. And we walked up this concrete ramp. It was just mud on the other side, freezing cold, wind blowing across. And those deep and dark panels, almost onyx black, had been laid side by side. Not all of the 58,000 names were even placed just yet. They were still putting the panels in. We began to talk to the veterans and then Monsignor Curlin talked to them about their brothers in arms. And they talked about reaching out and touching the names of the men with whom they had served. But the sun got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And they said, our brothers are coming to look for their names. We can't even see them. They haven't put the lighting along the walkway yet. Bishop Curlin turned to me and he said, let's go. He was a practical man. If you knew him, you understood that. So we went back to Mary, the mother of God, which was a novena church, which meant we had candles. We had lots of candles. And he had this old brown Bonneville. And we filled the trunk with cases of those 12-day votive lights. Then there were more cases in the back seat. I had two cases on my lap. Back down to the mall we went. And the veterans helped us unload the candles. And we lined that sidewalk in front of those black granite panels. Lined them with the candles from old St. Mary's. And then we lit them. And now there was a pathway of light that extended up across those panels. And you could see the veterans then reaching and touching the names. It was a pathway of light. But it was a metaphor for his ministry in life because that light was not his. He just gave them the tools to see. It's what he did for all of us. The prophet Isaiah is always looking forward, always promising the people, saying, I know what you've been through, but there's another way. Because on this holy mountain, something special will happen. God will come and be with you. He will abide with you. In the words of Pope Francis, he will accompany you on your journey of life, no matter what comes. Each one of us in this church and so many hundreds of people far beyond the reaches of these doors have had their lives touched by this good man because he served as a kind of sign to something greater, a pathway to that light that was not his own. It's not what he was about. He's always pointing to something greater, something more beautiful, always with an optimistic tone, always with an underlying sense of joy. This man who lived 90 years, 60 years in the priesthood, never lost his idealism. He said to me on the first day of my priesthood, when he preached my first mass, he said, your family here, so many of these folks, they will move away. And in time, they will be replaced by your parishioners, the people of God. 
And if you love them, he said, if you love them, they will move mountains for you. If your people sense you do not love them, they will not cross the street to say hello. They will become, if you love them, your family, your dear friends, and that is a sign of God's presence among us. The story of the disciples walking on that road to Emmaus, it was a way in which Bishop Curlin showed us through his love for the Eucharist as the center of his life that we recognize the Jesus among us in the breaking of the bread. All through his ministry, as a parish priest, when I first met him when I was seven years old, he gave me my first communion and told me I would be a priest and I knew the fix was in. <laughs> but that kind of idealism, that kind of joyful spirit, that kind of optimism and love for the Lord and the Blessed Mother, it filled our hearts, didn't it? Because he recognized that his role in life as a pastor, whether that was of a church community or a wonderful diocese like this, was to bring Jesus to our hearts, to have us recognize that we walk the earth with Jesus within us. He was fond of that expression of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who said, heaven does not begin when we die. Heaven begins when we understand that God comes down upon the altar and becomes one with us in the Eucharist. He helped us to understand that it was real, that God's love for us is real, that God's love for us, especially this season of Christmas, is alive. The miracle of the incarnation is what happened in Bethlehem so many centuries ago, but what can happen in each one of our hearts? And with that presence, we can change the world. That's what he did for us. He understood that he was simply an instrument of God's peace. There was a sense in which, and you've experienced this with him, that he accepted us for who we were and then invited us to grow. Even when some of us, my brother priests, were, well, shall we say, diamonds in the rough. He focused on the diamonds and not the rough. He gave us a chance to grow, to understand the love that Jesus had and continues to have for each one of us. You know, we talk a lot today about legacy. <clears throat> we talk a lot about the legacy that people leave when, when they go to the Lord. His legacy, the, the legacy of However you knew him, Father Bill, Monsignor Bill, Bishop Bill, Bishop Curlin, this remarkable man, his legacy lives on. Lives on in the over 200 men that he sent to the seminary as the vocation director in Washington, D.C. Lives on in the homeless women that he helped through his founding of the Mount Carmel House at Old St. Mary's in Washington, D.C. Lives on in the countless souls who were lifted up and given hope and given that light of God's love that we celebrate in this season of Christmas through his example, through his love for the Lord, through his contagious sense that God's love is real and that he walks the earth in each one of us and that it is the Jesus in us that then is compelled to find the Jesus in one another. And so Bishop Bill, we thank you. We thank you for being that beautiful conduit of God's love and consolation and hope in a world that many times is riddled by cynicism. You have taught us to let the, 
the cataracts of skepticism fall from our eyes and to see this tender and compassionate God in our own hearts and in the lives of one another. And so we thank you. We thank you for letting God's love and his light guide you and to touch our hearts. And we thank you for loving all of us so very well. Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. For William, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brother William, who served the church as a bishop and a priest, that he may given, be given a place in the liturgy of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother William, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward, reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With God, there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Almighty and merciful God, eternal shepherd of your people, listen to our prayers and grant that your servant William, our bishop, to whom you entrusted the care of this church, may enter the joy of his eternal master there to receive the rich reward of his labors. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are those who have died in the Lord. Let them rest from their labors, for their good deeds go with them. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.